Welcome to the Greenwich Means Business podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Greenwich Means Business podcast. I'm Dada and I'll be your host for today. I am joined by Swayam, who is a current international um, student studying business management. So would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Swayam and I'm from India. And this is my first year and I'm doing business management in University of Greenwich. Cool. So um, how did you find and choose the University of Greenwich? Like what was the process between finding where, because obviously you're an international student. um, So What made you pick London? What made you pick Greenwich specifically? So just tell us the story, basically. Yeah. So actually, my uncle graduated from Greenwich Mm. uh, in 2011. So that's how I found about University of Greenwich. And about London, I think London is a great place to study because my family has been attracted to London, particularly from like even my dad wanted to study in London, even my mother. So that's why I came to London. And also about University of Greenwich, uh, apart from my uncle, also my agent recommended me this university as it was very, you know, uh, famous. The Greenwich Business School is uh, pretty famous for business courses. Nice. And you said your uncle was a graduate at University of Greenwich, yeah. right? So did he also study business management or somewhere in that mm, field? No, he did not study ba- uh, business management. Actually, he studied architecture mm. and he graduated in 2011. So that's how I first heard about UOG. Mm, nice, nice. And... Um, you mentioned the agent as well. So yeah. did you go through the uh, international student agency that kind of uh, helps out with uh, mainly in India? Or? Yeah. So mainly in India, it's like you have to uh, go to a particular international agency and not just one. There are plenty of agencies back in India. So you can choose anyone you like and they'll help you through the application process until you get your visa. Nice. Yeah. So they have been very supportive. Very good. Very good. And um, so that's now moves on to my next question. What was the application process like for you? Yeah. So application process for me was very easy because I have a good percentage in English. I got into uh, Greenwich University without giving any further third party exams. So I think it was pretty easy for me. But for other students, I think it's a bit difficult because you have to give a separate exam to get into universities abroad. Nice. And would you say your agent helped out with the easiness of the application yeah, process? Yeah, I think or? he pretty much did. Yeah, he made it a lot easier. Oh, nice, nice. And uh, what made you pick business management? Yeah, business management for me is a very a personal concept because my family has been involved in business since 50 years. And that's why I chose business management, because I could relate to it personally. Interesting. And uh, if you don't mind me asking, what business are your family in right now? Uh, my family is doing casting manufacturing. That is basically steel manufacturing mm. back in India. Okay. So what I learned back in India from my own experience, I think I could pretty much relate to everything that I'm studying right now. And also I could relate it with my uh, learning back in high school. So I think everything just, you know, sums up to the, like the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. And um so you also mentioned high school as well. Do you have any business management like subjects in uh, high school? Or? Yeah. So back in high school, up till my A levels, that's what we say in UK, I had business management as my top subject for, and I studied for two two years. Uh, would you say that also um, helped you pick business management as well? So kind of the combination of your um, A level equivalents to also your uh, family business, or I think that's what sparked my interest in business. After studying business studies in deep, I think that's what sparked my interest in learning about my own business. Mm. So now that you're a University of Greenwich student and uh, obviously this is your first year. So how has it been so far with your student experience, like settling in, moving into accommodation and meeting new people, what your classes are like, etc. Yeah. So when I first moved to London, I explored London. And then on 9th September, I finally moved into my accommodation. That is when the license starts. So mm. after moving into my accommodation and even moving in process was very easy. The people at Macmillan Student Village are very helpful uh, with the moving process. And settling in was pretty easy as well because I have some good company. I have made some good friends and also my course mates, my tutorial mates. Everyone is fantastic. Very nice. Very good to hear. And uh, what about your classes? Um, so how do obviously university is a different experience, but also um, learning in a different country must be different as well. So. Yeah. How's it been? How's it been different compared to in India? Uh, compared to India, I think uh, University of Greenwich offers me plenty of other options. Like uh, they have a very good, uh, they have a big campus. First of all, I love the University of Greenwich campus. It's th- I think it's the best campus in London, actually. Mm. And also the tutorials and the lectures, I think they are really helpful for me. And they help me understand business in a deeper, like deeper context. 
and also back in India we don't have uh, much to study compared to here we have a lot of assignments here in India we only used to have exams so oh, really? assignments didn't play a very big role in back in India mm. they were just exams so would you say like the courses back home are so you had no coursework at all no assignments it was we just... had coursework but not as much as here mm. it, like it was very less compared to what we have here because back in India, we have exams. And here, we don't have exams. We have assignments, we have essays, we have reports. So mm. I think that's the main difference. So you find it more easy as well? Yeah. Right on top of that. Nice. Very, very nice. And um, that moves on to my next question. So what do you think um, you could do with a business management degree? So what, what, what do you see yourself doing after you graduate? So after I graduate, I actually plan on taking over my family business. So after my dad, I think I'm going to be the one becoming the CEO of my own company. And I think uh, this degree provides me with a lot of value and knowledge about my own business and understanding how business works, actually. Nice, nice. So would you say that um, this would definitely improve your work ethic by um, studying abroad um, and it would help you more by studying in the UK uh, to manage your family business in India, right? Yeah, definitely. Mm. And uh, are you involved in any extracurricular activities, any societies? Um, so basically any um, activities outside of your learning? Yeah, so I have been involved in a lot of activities, co-curricular activities. I am the secretary for Indian Society at Greenwich mm. and also the student representative of my program for the first years. Nice. And what, what was that like? Uh, do, you feel, do you feel like um, that's helped you in your studies or do you think it's uh, in improving yourself as a student or...? So I think becoming a student rep was a big step for me because I'm able to gather feedbacks from other students, my course mates, and getting to know what they feel like, like what's been going on, how are they been, how are they settling in. So I think it's a good exposure for me, getting to know other people, getting to know their problems, and carrying it forward to other people like my course leader, that is Scott Tyndall. And I think it's by far it's been a very great experience. Yeah, so and it probably will help you as well with your, um, well, because obviously your plan is to manage your family business yeah. as well so maybe um uh being like a co-founder of the indian society um would 100 percent help you with uh managing your business back home um when you want to take uh take it over from your father what does a typical day in your life look like as a obviously well you have a different yeah. life now compared to back home you have made i'm sure you have like a lot of responsibilities or something like that so just give us like a, a day in the life of swayam I think it's the pre it's pretty opposite compared to back in India. Mm. This is a complete opposite lifestyle for me because back in India, I had no responsibilities actually. Mm. So I, in London, I have a lot of responsibilities. I have to wash the dis dishes, clean my room, do the coursework alone and everything. Back mm. in India, we had people for everything. So this is a complete opposite lifestyle for me. So I think it's been a good experience so far. Yeah, so you've kind of taken on the uh, live by yourself. Yeah, live by or... yourself. Technically, yeah, that. Yeah. Um, and have you been involved in any projects or work experience during your time at uni? So, so obviously you mentioned mm. the Indian Society, anything else other than that? No, I think, I don't think so because as this is my first year and it's only been like three months, I think this is enough for me right now. Yeah. And do you plan on doing anything like internships or placements that obviously comes in your second year? Yeah. So do you plan on getting any work experience whilst you're here at Greenwich? Uh, I don't think so because I'm not looking for work experience right now. Mm. All I do, all I want to do is study on, uh, like focus on my studies here. Yeah. Focus on your studies yeah. only, yeah? That's what I'm looking at, yeah. I only have uni for three days. That, are, that is Monday, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Thursdays I have four classes. Mondays and Tuesdays I'm only in for two hours. So I think it's uh, very easy for me because back in India we had like five days of classes, maybe six days sometimes. So I think this is a really big change for me. Would you say there's a lot of things for students to do um, outside of study? Just to yeah, pass I think the time a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we have a lot of opportunities outside of studies. We can do a part time. Like in, for international students, we have 20 hours per week for part time. So I mm. think we can even proceed with part time if we have free time. Yeah. And have you currently got a part time job outside of uh, studies? Uh, no, I'm not looking for a job right now. So not in the first year. Not in the first year. Yeah. Okay. And um, a lot of, so you said you made the, um, some new friends right now um, so are they from in are they fellow Indians are they uh, other people as well or yeah so I like to mix with other cultures so I have a lot of friends from like ranging from Indians I also have Indian friends but also I have like people from Spain people from France and also pre uh, people from UK itself 
Nice. And um, would you say that's what also spurred you to pick um, London as well to study? Just yeah, uh, to get that exposure. Yeah, yeah. Because it's interesting. Um, London's also more, uh, very multicultural. It's one yeah. of the most multicultural cities in the world. So I was just wondering whether that's what also spurred you on to pick yeah. London. Cool. Very interesting. And um, so you also mentioned that there's six days, six days a week of learning sometimes. And yeah. So does that also apply to universities as well? Or is, or, or is that just um, I think, high school? Or? Yeah, I think up to high school, you have six days a week mm. and eight hours every day. Whoa. Seven to eight hours every day of studying. Wow. And in, co in university, I think it's actually reduced down to maybe six hours or five hours. Mm. That depends on what university you are studying in back in India. Wow. Okay. <laughs> that, that's a lot of Yeah, hours. that's a lot. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Almost like a full-time job. Full-time job, yeah. Yeah. Is that another reason you picked London as well? Is just uh, did, you know, did you know that the hours were going to be reduced in terms of studying and uh, work outside of class and whatnot? Yeah, I had no idea that the... Well, like the study culture in London was this. I had no idea that we only had uni three days a week. I mm. was prepared for uni six days a week, but I think this is a this is actually very easy and very nice. Really, mm. yeah, nice. It's interesting. flexible. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It most certainly is because you have some days where you're not even in uh, university at all. Yeah. You have no lessons or whatever. It just gives you time to breathe or even time to do your coursework if you have a need to be due as yeah. well. What, what are your plans going forward once you graduate? So after graduating, I'm gonna be moving back to India where I will take over my family business, help my father, help my grandfather, and further expand my family business. Yeah. That's what uh, I'm aiming for. Cool. Do you, um, have you had any experience so far, like any exposure to your family business even prior to moving to London as well? Yeah, I have been having like, uh, before I moved to London, I actually worked in my own company for three months. I helped set up uh, another unit. We already had another unit. I took over the unit and helped set up the whole uh, team. I was a project head intern for my own firm and also... Uh, also an intern manager, just like that, yeah. Nice, nice. And uh, so this was all in the same business then, same right? Same business. Same business. Uh, did that unit specialize in anything specific? Or? Yeah. My company basically focuses on gearboxes, which is uh, doing, this, this is basically steel business. You take steel, you melt it down, you put it into molds, and then you supply it outside. Mm. That's what we basically do. Cool. So it's, it's directly involved in the manufacturing process. Yeah, then, steel right? manufacturing, actually. Nice, nice, nice. And um, so you headed a team specializing in gearbox manufacturing, right? Yeah. Is that right? And then you said Italy as well. Yeah. Um, so this is automotive parts, right? That yeah. you're specializing in. Yeah. Very interesting. So how did you manage to procure like, uh, Indian clients? Uh, did you just um, offer your services or, and then you managed to, and then the clients reached out to you or... How did it? How did that happen? So since we have been in the business for a very long time, from 1973, so oh, we have okay. actually had a lot of clients. First of all, we ma managed to capture the domestic market, like the basic local market, and then we moved on to reaching on uh, like uh, state-wise clients. Like we moved from local, then we moved from state, and then we moved from country. So after capturing the local market, we moved on to capturing the state market, and after then we proceed like proceeded to go with international market. Oh, very nice, very nice. And um, how did how did how did the Italian market um, discover you, or did you just uh, manage to promote your services effectively? Would you say you marketed it very good? Yeah. So in terms of marketing, uh, my father used to attend a lot of seminars, which actually helped our company gain a reputation internationally. And also the Italy supply. The main problem in supplying to Italy is the weather and mm. how we supply the material to Italy because. It's like a very wrong route from India to Italy and the material tends to get very wet and uh, it doesn't, you know, doesn't last long when you supply it from a very long distance. Yeah. You have to take care of a lot of things. Yeah, of course, of course. And I can imagine the process is quite long and costly yeah, as well because obviously you're from Southeast, from South Asia all the way to Southern Europe yeah. as well. Like, um, And how, how do you transport it across? Uh, is it with... Um, with trucks was it is it with uh is it shipped over there or how how is it uh we ship it over there but mm. sometimes if there's an emergency case or maybe we are developing a new product for them we uh, do it via aircrafts oh very nice and um so in terms of your um so obviously you managed to inquire italian clientele yeah um do you have any uh expansion plans like where else do you want to uh ship uh, ship your products off to yeah so we are looking at usa right now maybe germany so wherever we can find good clients, we are ready to uh, do business with them. Cool. So um, you managed to uh, acquire Italian clientele through um, your marketing efforts, which is obviously you mentioned your father does um, yeah. seminars and whatnot. Um, 
so how do you plan on um, expanding your marketing plan? Like, do you plan to continue doing these seminars, promoting on uh, more platforms than you did before? Oh, and so what platforms did you promote these seminars on um, initially? Yeah, so in India, we have a lot of in-person seminars, like real seminars, where you actually go and meet people instead of doing it online. Mm. In India, people prefer to meet face-to-face rather than do it on Teams or maybe Zoom, something like that. Mm. So that's how my father did it. He actually met with a lot of people, made a lot of new friends. And, and by my, in my time in London, I think I'm going to do the same, meet, a, meet with a lot of people, maybe do some networking. Yeah, yeah. That, that's very important. They're very important. That's what um, the University of Greenwich actually um, promotes quite a lot because um, networking is the way to kind of get your way into any industry, really, not yeah. just business management or um, acquiring clientele, but just anything to do with networking will get you places. So you also mentioned USA and uh, who else? Germany. Mentioned? And Germany, yeah. Um, so does your, do you plan to do in-person seminars in those countries to kind of try to acquire uh, the clientele in these countries? Or? Yeah, so USA and Germany actually hold a lot of seminars in India itself. And mm. also I'm looking for UK because UK has JCB. Mm. And we also specialize in manufacturing gay boxes for those tractors. So I'm also looking for looking to expand my business in UK also. Mm. Do you think being a part of the Indian society and kind of helping run it, do you think that will help you in kind of networking and uh, find, finding yourself um, people to potentially build clientele with? Or? Yeah, definitely. Like being part of an Indian society, like I have, I have met a lot of new people. I think we are having some fun parties. We are doing more networking as well. And I think meeting with a lot of people gives you new experiences. You can hear about their experiences in Greenwich, in London, back in India. So I think it's, I think it's uh, pretty far been so good. Yeah. And do you, have you met any like-minded people? So people who plan to um, build a business of their own, take over their family business, etc. Have you met anyone who's... Um... Yeah. In those three months, I haven't met anyone who aims to uh, do business. Uh, people are mostly looking for jobs here, mm. but I don't think anyone has the aspiration to start their own business or maybe take over the family business. Do you think that's the key difference between here and India is that people, yeah. is that people here prefer to have like a high paying job working for a different company, whereas in India, everyone aspires to open up their own business? Yeah. So the work culture difference between India and UK is that everyone, as you said, wants a high paying job in the UK, but in India it's the complete opposite. Even a small time worker who earns like only 10,000 pounds a year can start a business. He can do a business from his home or her home. They mm. can start business anytime they want. And even the government supports a lot. Like they pay you money to start your own business. Oh, no way. That's very good. So yeah. you, you definitely say that there's more entrepreneurial opportunities back home rather than here. Because I think um, here there's, there's always a stress in like, okay, work for this big corporation, work for this, like... So that you don't. So there's definitely not that uh, mindset back home. There's no that even because there there are a lot of big corporations back home, like uh, back in India, that you could work for. But you, it, there's always a stress that it's better to just start a business. Yeah. So definitely, like uh, in India, people tend to start their own businesses. They like to be their own boss. That is what they say. Mm. Instead of working for a MNC or maybe some big company, people tend to be their own boss and start their own firms, start their own companies, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. So have you taken advantage of networking opportunities? Where So have you been to any events? Uh, have you been to any seminars, etc.? I've been to one seminar that was organized by International Business Society in Greenwich. Mm. And uh, so far, I think that's the only event I've attended uh, in those three months. Uh, did you find it useful? Did you manage to meet, uh, network with any people over there? Yeah, I met with a lot of people, not just my age, people that, who are uh, like older than me people who are actually working, doing a job. And I met a lot of different people, yeah. Yeah, uh, would you say they um, helped you in any way to kind of move you uh, forward in your path that you want to take or? Yeah, I think they actually helped me understand what they feel like and how they are working and understand their work experience. And I think it helped me gain knowledge of how people work here and also the difference between UK and India. Yeah, so um, kind of focusing again on the, um, the uh, working in the corporate life yeah. versus the um, entrepreneurial lifestyle. Yeah. Mm. Do you find the industry that your father's company uh, specializes in interesting? Like, uh, so you said steel manufacturing, right? Yeah. And you mentioned the fact that you headed the unit specializing in gearboxes. So are you interested in the automotive kind of industry 
Oh. I think we have been expanding a lot recently, not just automotive, maybe like uh, different kinds of gearboxes, mm. uh, like aircraft uh, gearboxes and something like that. We have been expanding a lot recently. We have a lot of new patterns and I think casting is an amalgate of art and science. So it takes a lot of time, but it's actually very good and mm. very interesting. Yeah. So obviously you mentioned the fact that um, the work uh, lifestyle and the study lifestyle in India is very different where uh, where you, you're almost overwhelmed with a lot of work. So um, as a result of that, do you have any kind of uh, study hacks that you have picked up in the UK as a result of having the, the overwhelming workload back home? Yeah, so back in India, we used to have assignments, but they were not online. We actually had to write those on paper and submit it. Yeah, oh. so it's not in it's not like that in UK where you do everything online. You do it on Moodle mm. and you do it via Turnitin. And we can also use AI. I think AI is a pretty good tool when it comes to study hacks. And basically, even our uni is very strict for plagiarism. Mm. So I think using AI in a good way is actually a good study hack. Yeah. In India, we didn't have AIs. We we had to get everything from books about what we learn and how we like actually understand about the whole concept. Yeah. Do you find that you have to read a lot of books, like even uh, not not just skimming and scamming for whatever you need, but do you have to find read whole chapters and whatnot yeah. to kind of um, find what you're looking for, find what to reference? Yeah. I think back in India, referencing was not a big issue. You can just take information from any book you want and put it into your own words. And I think that was it. And writing on paper is actually easier for me than doing all of the referencing and uh, the different referencing styles in the UK. Yeah. I think writing on paper was much easier for me. Really? That's yeah, interesting. It was. Um, and uh, you also mentioned that there's no referencing also. Is that what you found difficult in the transition uh, with uh, moving, uh, I mean, studying into, in the UK where, where you have to study, uh, where you have to reference everything that you write? Yeah. So in, when I first moved to UK and I learned about Harvard referencing style, I found it pretty difficult. But then I actually read about it and actually did some reports. I did some essays and I, did, I read some sample essays. And I think after reading for a while, I think I actually found it very easy. Mm. And I think it's easier to do when you understand it fully. Yeah, so you managed to pick it up quickly and you yeah. realized that um, it actually can help you in, yeah. the, in the long run. So how did you find the, um, how do you find the university's facilities such as the library and whatnot? Do you have a lot of, do you, would you say there's a lot of um, places where you could study quietly or maybe do some group work as well? So how have you been finding the facilities? I think, uh, I think the university library is a very good resource option. You can find a lot of resources. You have an online website that is connected to your portal. You can find information on the online library and maybe, and it's pretty easy for me and it's very convenient. And also library is a very good place to study as it's very quiet and it's uh, very spacious. I think it can, it can accommodate up to like uh, a lot of students at one time. Yeah. I think it's a pretty good facility. And talking about facilities, I love how our, how our university has cafes in the campus. Mm. Uh, this is the complete opposite back in India because in uh, India, you don't have cafes in the uni. You have oh. canteens. Mm. And, and in our university, we have three cafes in the campus. And I think it's very great. Yeah. And the... Uh, Talk, coming back to the subject of the library, so you also, you, so you said that you did a lot of um, uh, handwritten assignments and uh, that you referred to books and whatnot. Do you still find yourself doing that even though you've moved here, like just using the libraries act? Because obviously we we still have um, physical books that students sometimes use. So do you still find yourself doing that, or have you now transitioned to the kind of online typing on Microsoft Word kind of thing? I have transitioned to the online thing, but I actually like to read books in my free time. Mm. And my main interest, apart from business, is politics. And I think politics and business are interrelated. There's yeah. no stopping and there's like, there's, you can't separate both of them. There's always a connection between both of them, business and politics. 100%, especially yeah. political events always has an effect on, business. on the businesses. Yeah. And no matter what industry you're involved in, there's, al there's always something that, that will impact the uh, the business if anything political happens yeah so how have you found the campus you know do you like the the look of it do you find the the classrooms and all the other facilities um like useful um aesthetically pleasing or yeah i think university of greenwich has the best campus as i said earlier and it's just very tiring mm. the main thing is that between uh, the gap between the lectures is so less that you have to run from one place to another it takes you a lot of time and i think it's not enough the gap between the lectures yeah. Yeah. I, it's a long I, campus. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. It is quite a big um, campus. And um, 
So coming on to accommodation again, so which accommodation have you settled for? in? Uh, um... Yeah, I live in Macmillan Student Village, mm. uh, which is a University of Greenwich accommodation. Nice. And um, so how have you found settling into that? Was it, was it, is it a good facility? Is it, is it set up nicely for you? Do you have ensuite bathrooms or? Yeah, I have an ensuite room. And the plus point in Macmillan is that you don't have just Greenwich students. You have students from Trinity Laban, you have UCL, you have QMUL. So I think you get a lot of diversity, you meet a lot of new people. And talking about rooms, we have a personal fridge with, which no other accommodation has. This is only exclusive to Macmillan. We have a personal fridge and our bathrooms are bigger compared to all the other accommodations. Nice, very nice. So have you had a chance to visit the Painted Hall by any chance? Yeah, I visited the Painted Hall and I found it pretty amazing. All those beautiful pictures and the whole ambience of Painted Hall was just amazing. Cool. Uh, have you had any chance to see any filming? So obviously of old Royal Naval College, um, there's a lot of big productions there. Many major films and series have been filmed there. Have you managed to see any filming going on there? Or Yeah, just recently, I think I've seen the shooting of Crown season six. Mm. I think that just happened very recently last week. And I think it was very fascinating how they shoot on campuses and manage to fit in students. Yeah, indeed. Um, they, always, they always film a uh, big, big film series yeah. over there. Um, I think Crown is a very well-known series. Yeah, and I thought Bridgerton as well, am I right? Yes, yeah, Bridgerton. also yeah. Thor the Dark World. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was sh shoot at, filmed in Greenwich as well. Yeah, very iconic campus that you, you are studying in. So you mentioned those facilities um, those, uh, where you can take part in these um, activities. Would you say that's a, another key difference in u university study in India versus the UK? Or Yeah, so in, back in India, we didn't have societies. We used to have clubs. Uh, in UK, we have societies. And I think we have a lot more variety in UK compared to India. We have specializations in business. We have specializations in sports. I think that's a big difference back from India. In India, we used to have small clubs or maybe just like, a, you know, a main university club. In, in here, we have a lot of different clubs. We have clubs and societies for everything. And I think that's pretty great. You know, that helps people choose what they really want. Yeah, 100%, I agree. So what would you say is the main difference uh, between British and Indian work ethics? So I think the main difference between British and Indian work ethics would be how people in Britain tend to go for high paying jobs. They like to work nine to five. And back in India, people don't like to work nine to five. They despair that job. They like to be their own boss. They tend to start their own businesses. I think entrepreneurship is really on the growth in India. People are starting their new businesses every day. And I think the government is actually supporting them starting new businesses. Nice. And would you say um, that Indians prefer the flexible work hours um, because of the, uh, the overwhelming hours they had to endure during their schooling period? Uh, definitely, like Indian people like to work in the flexible hours, they like to be flexible, they like to be free on weekends and everything. So I think they they will choose the most flexible thing, like they choose the most convenient, what is the convenient thing for them. Yeah, and uh, as you said as well, they like to be their own boss. I think um, in the UK, there's not a push on that as much because um, obviously there's, there's a lot, loads of big corporate yeah. firms that, you know, they offer high paying jobs and whatever. So I think maybe that's more of a push. I think a lot, even in universities, I think there's also a big push on um, internship and work placements yeah. where um, they will say apply to KPMG or these big firms. So would you say that's another key difference in India as well is the fact that maybe universities don't push that, but they do they push for more uh, business startups over there or? Yeah, in India, we have actually a lot of people coming in they do seminars about how you can start your own business. They invite a lot of CEOs. And I think that's also a key difference because universities in UK push people to pursue a job rather than starting their own business. Back in India, it's the complete opposite. The universities or the colleges don't focus on doing jobs. They just focus on, focus on like getting you, giving you knowledge. They don't focus on jobs at all. Mm. They just guide you through the business that the course you have chosen. Yeah, interesting. And Despite this key difference, have you found anyone that has maybe supported you in your plan to manage your business back home or? I haven't found anyone. Like it's been only three months. I think I will find a lot of people as my time goes by in UK. Yeah, definitely. Um, so do you plan on attending more sem seminars and such? Because obviously we have the big picture seminar as well, where a lot of CEOs also um, 
present and speak to uh, students and you also will have a chance to network with them. So maybe you can receive very useful insights um, that you can take with you um, when running a family business in the future. Yeah, definitely. I, I'm planning to attend a lot of seminars that are happening in Greenwich itself or maybe in London as I get to connect with people, network with people and meet a lot of new people. I think that's the main reason why I came to UK to network with people and to meet new people that I can connect with and further help me expand my business. So thank you very much, Swam, for coming today. It's been a very um, interesting session. Uh, we've learned the key differences, uh, well, the cultural differences between um, the UK and India. Yeah. Thank you, Dada, for being a lovely host. It was very nice meeting you today. Pleasure. Likewise. You can find our podcast on Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts. Subscribe to never miss an episode.